Glory. Amen. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning. Let's get in the word. We've been examining being filled or be filled with the spirit. And I want to believe that everyone has been following the teachings on radio and online. If you have not been, you've done yourself the greatest disservice you can ever do. Because some of the things we're sharing are critical. Some of the things we're, we've been examining are very, very fundamental. Actually, they determine how much you can grow and how fast you can grow. The things I've been teaching the last one week. And if you don't understand them, they can make you a stunted believer. You just be in the church, having a nice time, playing church all your life. So it's important. And I will advise you, if you really miss the meetings, go get the material after this service and do yourself, and do yourself the favor. It's critical. All right, Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18. Ephesians, we're examining, be filled with the spirit. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But be filled with the spirit. Next verse, speaking. Be filled with the spirit, speaking. Be filled with the spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So we've been studying being filled with the spirit. Look at that Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not unwise. So if you're not understanding what the will of the Lord is, you are unwise. If you do not understand the will, the intent, the purpose, the plan of God, you are living in foolishness. Because being unwise is being foolish. The spirit, you must remember, is a spirit. Believers don't have different spirits. We have one spirit. Now, you know, sometimes when we read about Elijah and Elisha, where Elijah was about to leave and Elisha asked for a double portion of his spirit. Many people keep praying for double portion of the spirit because they're ignorant. They don't understand scripture. The double portion of your spirit there, you know, and, and people ask for that all the time. Oh, I want double of your anointing and all that. Mm -mm. Even in ministers conferences where pastors are gathered, you see them crying and praying and wailing for double portion. Oh, I want double portions. See them fasting for double portion. Well, in the Old Testament, that word double portion is an Old Testament terminology used for inheritance. Inheritance. All right? The approach is this. When you say double portion, it's like there's a father who has ten children. And the father is about to share his inheritance to his children. He will divide the property into eleven instead of ten. He will make it ten, eleven. Eleven portions. Everybody will have a portion and then one portion will be left. That one portion left is usually called the portion of the firstborn. That one portion left is what is called a double portion. Because it's a portion of an inheritance for the firstborn. When done, he will lift that portion and, you know, leave it for the firstborn. So it's called the portion of the firstborn. And it's given to the first child. The first child doesn't have a double portion of the fathers. He has a double portion of what his brothers have. See that? It's not like, I want to have a double portion of your anointing. No. The firstborn has a double portion of the inheritance that his other brother's house. So why did Elisha ask Elijah for a double portion of his spirit? Because there were other sons of the prophets that Elisha was part of. So what Elisha was asking for is a double of what everybody has. And then sometimes you hear some people say, well, you know, because Elisha had double portion of Elijah's spirit, that is why Elisha did double miracles. No, you, that's Bible illiteracy. There's nothing like that in the Bible. What the Bible teaches is that prophets were weighed by their revelation of Jesus. Prophets were weighed by their revelation of Jesus, not by the multiplicity of their miracles. They were weighed by the revelation of Jesus. That is why if you find out in the New Testament, no mention of Elijah and Elisha because their ministries did not reveal Jesus. There's no mention. The only quiet mention of Elijah is James. He said, Elias was a man of like passion. He prayed that he may not rain. Then he prayed again and it rained. That's all the mention. Jesus never mentioned any of them because none of them weighed. And then Jesus now speaking said, among all that are born of women, there's none that is as great as John the Baptist. Yet John the Baptist did not cure headache. 
See that. So, it is not the multiplicity of miracles in a man's ministry that makes his ministry great. It is the depth of his revelation of Jesus. Because all the prophets said, thus saith the Lord, John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God. So, what they were prophesying, John saw it. And then Jesus said, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John. Because John saw what the prophets prophesied, but the least in the kingdom houses what the prophets prophesied. So that is why today you don't pray for Elijah's anointing because Elijah was praying to have what you carry. You carry the greatest and that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. So a golden rule in Bible interpretation, please take this down, very important. A golden rule in Bible interpretation, which we have earlier stated and I've taught you this in this church, is that a text, the text of the scripture must be what the author intended when he wrote it. It cannot have some other interpretation before or after it was written. That is, the scriptures can never mean today what it never meant when it was originally written. Therefore, interpretation of scripture must be devoid of opinions or feelings. Interpretation of scripture must be devoid of opinions or feelings. That means your feelings are not required when it comes to Bible interpretation. We are not emotional in Bible interpretation. We are not sentimental. And in Bible interpretation, there is nothing like this is what I think. You are thinking your feelings are not required because the Bible has its own thought pattern and the Bible has its own message that it seeks to communicate. So now, remember that in Bible interpretation, there are certain keys that must be observed. Number one, there is the interpretation of literal or figurative expressions. Because the Bible is a piece of literature and this mode of communications we are using the Bible. So, in interpreting, we must be able to interpret the literal or figurative expressions. For example, a sentence is written in a plain literal way. It must be retained that way. When a sentence of scripture is written in a plain, literal way, it must be retained that way. However, when a sentence has pictorial and figurative expressions or explanations, one has a duty to find out the meaning as explained within the scriptures. You don't find the meaning outside. It is still going to be within the scriptures that you find the meaning that, that the scripture seeks to communicate. And the guide to note is that when a statement appears impossible in the Bible, a figure of speech is intended. When a statement appears impossible in the way it is written, it means a figure of speech is intended. For example, in reading Genesis chapter 3, there you see the serpent... You see the tree of life. You see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, um, and in our study, you will see that it is figurative. But if you observe in the New Testament, we have Adam and Eve who were characters. And that is why in the epistles, Adam and Eve were retained. The epistles talked about Adam and Eve, very direct and clear. But then you will understand why in the epistles, you never see fruit, you never see tree, you never see it, because those were figurative. In the epistles, you won't see that repeated, because if epistles are revelation, the Old Testament is types and shadows. Are we teaching good? Yeah, it's types and shadows. So in the epistles, where we have the revelation of the scriptures, you will see that even the serpent, the word serpent was retained, but it was explained that the serpent, which is the devil. So the serpent in the Old Testament, which is the devil, explained in the New Testament, was not an animal. It was a figure of speech. That's why it's called the serpent. Not serpent, not a serpent. The serpent. The serpent. And the New Testament calls him the devil. Now, the next thing you must observe in interpreting scripture is contextual interpretation and usage of words. Contextual interpretation and usage of words. <clears throat> so, a Bible teacher must ensure that he does not lift text out of context. You don't lift text out of context. Care must be taken to interpret text contextually. That is, 
interpret a statement around its surrounding statements and not outside for example in first corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 put it up for me first corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 to 5 we're reading five verses it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Next verse. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that, that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. Next verse. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Key questions to ask yourself when you read a text of scripture like that will be number one. What did Paul mean by to deliver to Satan? What did Paul mean by deliver somebody to Satan? Number two, how can you deliver a believer over to Satan? How can you deliver a believer over to Satan? So firstly, in reading that verse, it's important for you to note that the issue was not the brother's sin as much as his boldness to do so and the attitude of the church in not speaking up against such shameful conduct that was the main issue then remember that the word satan in that text of scripture the word satan was translated from a greek word that means one who opposes one who opposes other shades of meaning will include accusation and opposition. So when he says deliver to Satan, what he means is deliver him to accusation or deliver him to opposition. It doesn't mean deliver him to demon Satan. He's dealing with, you know, opposition or, 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 or accusation. So brother Paul already talked about it earlier in that text of scripture. Now remember also, in Bible interpretation, you must interpret the Bible based on corroborative evidences. Corroborative evidences are the law of double mention. The law of double mention. is a rule of Bible study. To use the compatibility rule to properly explain this, you will ask, where else was this statement used? Where else was this statement used? Because this principle agrees with the principles of judgment in scriptures. Second Corinthians 13 verse 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Corroboration. Two or three witnesses. This was derived from Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse number six at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death jesus taught the same you know using the same rule in matthew 18 verse 15 to 16 on judging a matter and on prayer of agreement he says moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Next verse. Again, I say unto you. Okay, okay, next verse. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. All right. So two or three corroboration. All right. Then Jesus, I mean, Brother Paul also used that same rule in the judging of prophecies. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. And you know, the word judge there has to do with understanding. Let the other, you know, understand or interpret or let the other subject the prophecy to the scrutiny of scripture as to give a doctrinal substance or doctrinal weight to that prophecy. 
And if that prophecy does not have doctrinal support, then that prophecy can be trashed. Because even though it's a prophecy, it must be subjected to doctrinal alignment. And if it does not fall within the, the, the configuration of sound doctrine, you trash the prophecy. So that's why it has to be judged also. Are we together in the building? All right, now, let's take tongues for an example because we've been dealing with being filled with the Spirit. Let's take tongues for example. Mark 16, verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak. If your Bible is mine, I will underline speak. They shall speak, not they shall meditate in tongues. They, a, lot, a lot of believers meditate in tongues. When we say, open your mouth and pray in tongues, they meditate in tongues. You are disobeying scriptural clear instructions. They shall speak. They shall speak except they are not believers. If they are believers, they shall speak. It is a sign that accompanies believers. In fact, a fundamental primary sign of the supernatural. And a believer is a supernatural entity because that which is born of spirit is spirit. So since the believer is born of the spirit, the primary identification or the primary identity of that believer is that he speaks spirituals. You have to open your mouth. You are saved by speaking. You, you speak as a believer. You continue speaking. Christianity is a profession. We keep talking. Christians are supposed to be talkatives. We talk all the time. And we talk spirituals. Are you in the building this morning? Yeah, you're supposed to be speaking. Now, take note of Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Acts chapter 2 verse number 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak. Remember the instruction. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. How do we know a man that is full of the Spirit? He speaks. You can't claim to be full of the Spirit and you're dumb. No. People that are full of the Spirit speak because we're out of the abundance. When you are so full, it must find its way out. That is a sign of people that are full of the Spirit. When you get filled with the Spirit, you speak. You have utterance. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or enablement. Remember, remember, as a believer, there are two contacts of the Holy Ghost in the believer. Number one, the indwelling of the Spirit, which are taught within the week, Ezekiel 36. I will put a new spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. That is, my spirit will be your nature and because my spirit will be your nature, you will walk in the spirit. That is your nature. Then Joel chapter 2 gave another prophecy. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Spirit upon is ministry. Spirit within is your Christian life. So the spirit upon is for ministry. You shall be witnesses because of the spirit upon. The spirit within will cause you to walk in my statues. A new spirit. A new heart. I will take away the heart of flesh. I will give you a heart of, I mean heart of stone. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will cleanse you with water. The living of the Holy Ghost in the believer is the cleansing of the Holy Ghost. The reason why the Holy Ghost can live inside you is because you have been cleansed. You are pure. So that is why the Holy Ghost can live inside you. Every child of God is sanctified. Every child of God is righteous. Every child of God is the habitation of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit cannot live in a filthy house. He lives in you because you have been purified. Are we in the building here? He can't live in a filthy house. He lives in a clean house. 
And the reason why he lives in you is because you have been cleansed. Both he that sanctify and they that are sanctified are all of one. So the spirit within is a union between you and Christ. Inseparable union. The spirit upon is ministry. You shall be witnesses. So they were filled and they spoke. Acts 10 46 in the house of Cornelius. Acts chapter 10 verse 46. Put it up for me quickly whoever on the computer. I need you to be awake. For they heard them speak. They heard them speak. They were not meditating tongues. You don't meditate tongues. You don't write tongues. You talk tongues. They heard them speak. Give me, give, put it up. Put it up for me. Give me the previous verse. 45. 45. And they of the circumcision which believe were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know that the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured out on the Gentiles? Next verse, next verse. For they heard them speak. I cannot know you have the spirit if you don't speak. That's why it is a sign that follows. Don't tell me how much spirit you have. Just speak it. It will settle the matter. Mango Lord of us. You don't pay rent to speak in tongues. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And yesterday I took time to deal with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I hope you guys were following. I took time yesterday to deal with all of that. Okay? I hope you were following because I'm going to ask you guys to do one of the things I taught. And if you didn't follow, you'll be exposing yourselves. We don't need entertainers. We need spirit-filled singers. There's a difference between entertainment and singing by the spirit. There are two different things. And I, I did a lot of teaching on that comprehensively within the week. Entertainment is of the devil, is of the world. Is the spirit of the world, entertainment. And we are not of the world. So our own is spirit-filled ministration. Their own is entertainment because all they have is the instrument, the dancing, and the choreography. That's all they have. We, what we have is spirit. Spirit talks to spirit. That's what we have. What they have is the dancing and the sensation and the emotion and it ends there. What we have is none of the outward, is the inward. So we don't have entertainment. We have ministration. We minister. You know, the truth of the matter is going into the new year, I'm going to change a lot of things because some of you in this church, you are still with the old move. You are still with the old move. Some of you are still carrying the old wine skin that cannot carry new wine. Things have moved. Things have moved. I have tried to patiently wait for some of you to catch up, but I will not wait again. Because I've tried. I'm serious. I'm not joking. In Acts chapter 6, you know, one of the criteria for being a worker in the church is that men that are full of the holy ghost how will you know men that are full of the holy ghost by speaking he said look out among you honest men of good report full of the holy ghost how do we know men that are full of the holy ghost they speak when men are full of the holy ghost they speak and they do ministry they speak and they do ministry. Because the essence of coming to church is to be equipped to do ministry. And there is 
there is heavy duty equipping. The equipping in this church is so much that all over the world, even people that are not sitting here physically are becoming equipped. Everywhere. That is to show you the intensity of equipping happening here. All over. Australia, India, Asia, Japan, uh, New Zealand, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, Dubai, Doha, everywhere. Because of the heavy duty equipping happening here, people are being equipped everywhere around the world. A young man took transport fare on Monday from Akure, landed here. He said, I've been watching. I don't want to watch from afar. And he's been here. He's still here this morning. He has been drinking the teachings and, and, and the spirit. There are people sitting here that have relocated. They moved their family to Akwaibom and started business in Uyo just because of Power City. Then you are sitting here with old oil and you think? There is heavy duty equipping going on. So if you are not equipped, you have yourself to blame before Jesus. Because as your pastor, I'm doing my work. I'm overdoing my work. If you don't praise me, I praise myself. Brother Paul said, let me boast a little in my folly. He said, let me boast a little in my folly. I love brother Paul. See the synesis. He said, let me boast a little in my folly. It's folly, but he's still boasting in it. It's a figure of speech. <laughs> Equipping is going on. All over the world. People not sitting under this congregation, we have equipped them to a point where they are pastoring churches all over the world. All over the world. You know, Pastor Praise, the, the, the biggest problem, and Jesus kept talking about it, the biggest problem that can be, befall believers, and Jesus kept warning, he said, if the signs and wonders that were done in Ty and Sidon were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have believed. He said, but a prophet is without honor in his own house. A prophet is without honor, save in his own house. Because the greatest hindrance to the manifestation of grace and ministry is familiarity. 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 Dr. Gabriel is sitting here. Dr. Gabriel kept coming to Uyo from Kaduna every year. Every year. He will come here and camp for 30 days Bible school. Every year. Every year. If I give Dr. Gabriel this microphone now, he will continue what I'm teaching from where I have stopped and end it where I want to end it. He's sitting here. He has drunk. Some of you are sitting here are still asking me questions. Is it okay for a woman to wear trousers? Why don't, why don't she wear nika? Is it only trousers? Let her wear nika. It's a serious matter. This morning, my spirit is on fire. Because I don't want anybody left behind. Acts 19.6. Acts 19.6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke. Spake. They did what? They spake with tongues and what? Prophesied. They spake with tongues and they prophesied. Hands were laid on them. These are disciples. These are people that just had the gospel for the first day. They have not been around. They just had it today. Hands were laid on them today. They spoke in tongues today and prophesied today. 
Somebody say, why I cannot prophesy? The spirit has not moved me to prophesy. <laughs> spirit move you. You will be there till rapture. It's not spirit that moves. It is you that moves. Then the spirit moves. They speak. The spirit didn't speak. They speak and they prophesied. The spirit didn't prophesy. They speak. They prophesied. Check your Bible. They speak. They prophesied. Because observe, observe. And I, I, I took time to deal with this, but I like to do a little bit of that. Open your Bibles quickly. Let me show you some things in Corinthians. Sharp, sharp, sharp. First Corinthians 12 31. First Corinthians 12 31. But covet earnestly. You covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. The word covet is the word desire. Earnestly. The word earnest is the word zealous. So zealously desire. So the gifts of the spirit will only operate in a man that is burning with a desire. If you don't have desire, the gifts of the spirit can't operate even though you house them. The believer carries all the nine gifts. There is no gift that is particular for somebody. All of us are custodians of the gifts of the spirit. Every believer. Every believer. And the spirit that has given you the gifts resides inside you, tabernacles inside you, and responds when you are willing. Once there is a will, the spirit gives the enablement. Did you see covet? Covet, you covet. That's your responsibility. You covet earnestly. That is desire zealously the best gifts. And you will have them. I give you another scripture. First Corinthians 14 verse 1. How can you covet what you don't know? So that's what we're teaching you. So that you know what is available so you can covet. 14.1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. But rather that you may prophesy. The word desire desire so it is man that desires to prophesy you are the one to desire the spirit doesn't desire for you desire spiritual gifts but beyond just speaking in tongues desire to prophesy he's not saying desires that you have the gift of prophecy he did say desire the gift of prophecy. Mm -mm. He said desire to prophesy because you already have the gift. So the desire is to function. The desire is so that the gift can express itself. Are we teaching here? Yeah, because you already have it. You already have it. Every believer has a gift. And the gift is there. But the, the gift can be dormant if you are not zealous if you're not excited look at first corinthians 14 12 <clears throat> first corinthians 14 12 even so ye for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church you are to seek to excel you are the one to seek you are the one to desire you are the one to covet you are the one to covet earnestly. It's not the spirit. It's you. <laughs> Holy Spirit, move me now. He moved you 2,000 years ago. It's not now he's going to move you. He moved you the day you got born again. From the day you got born again, you were moved. And he's waiting for you to move in response to his movement. See, I hear you. The Holy Ghost moved me now. He has moved already. Don't put the responsibility on him. <laughs> Seek to excel. To the edifying of the church. What does that mean? When he says seek to excel. To the edifying of the church. What is he talking about? Prophecy. 
Because it is in prophecy that the church is edified. So seek to go beyond Matoba Leteba to interpreting the tongues so that people can be edified. I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with my understanding. What is that? Tongues and interpretation. I will sing in the spirit and I will, it is within the purview of my will. I can stand up now, sing in the spirit and interpret it. It's within the confines of my will. Are we teaching good? It's within the confines of my will. It's not God, it's me. Praise God. I say praise God. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. You covet to prophesy and you forbid not to speak with tongues. Desire it. Desire it. Once there is a desire, there will be an expression. Once there is a desire, uh -uh. <laughs> the first major healing I saw in my life before I even raised the dead, because some of you don't know. The first major healing I saw in my life came out of a desire. One of the key brothers in our church that was a blessing to everybody took ill and was dying. The whole church fasted. Nothing happened. <laughs> so I embarked on a personal fasting retreat. And I made up my mind he must be healed and he must stand up from that bed. So compassion welled up within my heart. After three days of fasting and prayer, I arrived at his house 5 a.m. I knocked the door. They opened the door. I said, I came to pray for him. They, they brought me to the room. He was lying lifeless. At this time, he could not walk. He could not do anything. I fell on him. And I spoke to his body. While I was speaking, he broke out in sweat. Stood up for the first time and said, I want to urinate. That was the end of that sickness. When your heart is full of compassion and out of compassion you desire to see a miracle, you will see the miracle. The point is some of us are not selfless enough. Have you read, whenever Jesus was moved by compassion, a miracle broke out. Because the gifts are there, and they are given to every... 1 Corinthians 12, 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Put it up for me. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. The phenoresis of the Spirit, the unveiling of the Spirit is given to Every man, not some people, not some people, is given to every man to profit with that. Everybody under the sound of my voice has been given that manifestation. And it is for profit. What is the profit? The profit is not making money. The profit here is to benefit people who need the gift. It's given to every man. There's no place for dormant Christianity. Is given to every man. Right where you are sitting now. You are a container of the miraculous. You are a container of prophecy. You are a container of power. Is given to every man to profit with that. Every man. There is no segregation. Are you still in the building? So convert to prophesy. Convert to prophesy. Why do we have to lay hands on people? Because they don't know. They don't know. That's what we teach. So people can come to a place 
of acknowledging. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 14, see the instruction brother, brother Paul gave to Timothy. Neglect not the gift. You can neglect it. There is a gift inside you, but you can ignore it. So he instructs, not advice. This is an instruction. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Neglect. So, covet, desire, 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 covet, neglect not. All these are instructions that shows you that you are the one responsible for all of these. Some say, but I taught the spirit to do everything. <laughs> no. You are the one that will need to desire. Then the spirit will walk through you. Second Timothy 1 6. Glory. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Who will stir it up? You. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. This is specific to Timothy by Paul because Timothy received when Paul laid hands on him. It's not everybody that hands have to be laid on. On the day of Pentecost, nobody laid hands on anybody. Everybody spoke. So, but in Ephesus, he laid hands on them. Okay? In the house of Cornelius, nobody laid hands. While Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell on everybody and they spoke. So, there are people that hands are laid on. There are people that hands are not laid on. Whether it is by laying of hands or by without direct transmission, the important thing is that there is a gift inside you. Except you are not born of God. If you are born of God, the spirit of God is in you and the spirit of God resident in you came with everything that he carries. He came with all the gifts, he came with all the fruits and they are all inside you. They are all inside you. Hallelujah. I say they are all inside you. <laughs> Amen. Say so with me, I have the gift of the spirit. Can I hear you shout it very loud? I want all the TV audience and the online audience to be a bit jealous of you. Can I hear you shout it very loud? Say with me, I desire to prophesy. I desire to heal. I desire to work miracles. I desire to operate word of knowledge, word of wisdom. I desire to speak in tongues and interpret my tongues. I desire the gift of faith. And in the name of Jesus, they are resident inside me. And I will function in them. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. See, I stir up myself. Right now. I stir up myself. Stir up. Be filled with the spirit. Means be stimulated. Be stimulated. Be influenced by the spirit. Ephesians 5.18 be filled with the spirit be stimulated be be influenced by the spirit in luke 141 zechariah was filled with the spirit and he spoke luke 141 and it came to pass that when elizabeth sorry elizabeth had the salutation of mary the babe leaped in her womb and elizabeth was filled with the holy ghost what she did she do, did she do next and she spoke out everywhere people get filled with the spirit they speak out Remember, I established within the week. They received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Okay? And in Acts chapter 4, they were filled again. So be filled is a continuous thing that happens to the believer for the rest of his life. And every time you're filled, you speak. Every time you're filled, you speak. And a believer ought to be filled all the time. All the time. Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves. In Psalms, which is hymns, which is spiritual songs. Psalm is hymn, which is spiritual song. To, to make you know that the Psalm and the hymn is not the one written in SSS and S. Sacred songs and solos. That's not the hymn is talking of. That's why I call it spiritual. That is the Psalm and the, the Psalm, which is the hymn was given to you at that moment by the spontaneous move of the spirit. Spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your hearts. Singing 
and making melody in your hearts. Hallelujah. Acts 13 verse 9. I'm almost done. Are you blessed this morning? Acts 13 verse 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Next verse. And said, filled with the Holy Ghost. What was the next action? Spoke. He spoke. Acts 13 25. Acts 13 25. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? Sorry, 52. 1352. Acts 1352. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So what followed? Next verse. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so speak. Why did they speak? They were filled. Every time we gather like this, it's a time to be filled. That's why I say speaking to yourselves. Speaking to yourselves. You speak to the brethren. You speak to yourself. You speak to another person. We all edify. I don't want to sit near somebody that is not filled. Because when it's time to speak to one another, he has nothing to tell me. So from now, you have to look at the people who sit around you. And say, brother, are you filled? Do you have something to offer? <laughs> because we come together for edification. Why do we come together? For edification. I don't want somebody that will say, now minister to one another. And then he holds my hand and bend his head and keep quiet. You're not ministering to me. So when people behave like that, you know what to do? Lay hands on them. Receive. Receive. Now open your mouth and speak out. Receive the Holy Ghost. Minister to them. Don't be afraid. The reason why they did like that is because they don't know anything and they don't have anything to offer. And such as I have. Exactly. I'm not joking. Any time from now, I say, go to somebody, hold him and minister to him. And somebody will hold you and bend his head. He is saying, minister to me. Le remove. It is no more one to one. It is now I am ministering to you. Take it. Jekotobogoda. Open your mouth now. Ratobalaya. It's a new day. I'm telling you, brother, is a new dawn. Whenever people are filled with the spirit, there is something to see and there is something to hear. Listen, when the Holy Ghost came on Pentecost, it was not a funeral service. Everywhere was agog. Everywhere was ablaze. The whole place was wild. That's why people came to see. Because there are sights and sounds. Sight and sounds of the spirit. When men of the spirit assemble, there are sights and sounds. There are things to see and there are things to hear. I'm getting happy now. I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy. Yeah. When the spirit begins to move, when the spirit begins to move, there are things to see and there are things to hear. When men are full of the spirit, they say things and they do things. When you're full of the spirit, you want to lay hands on sick people because suddenly you feel like you're carrying load and you want to offload it. You want to drop it on those who need it. Am I talking to somebody here? Ayabada, Shakala de Begea, Metolo de Bo, Zakele de Ba, Ragodo Goboza, Galina Mahata, Membrando Sokolonda, Mebrea Lole Sakayada, De Deya de 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 La Badodo, Me Sakayada. Legro do sokala da baba merato bereka tarata ne kele na ma e shako barata na o ze bayada sights and sounds of the spirit reto bola radabara katanaga look at me everybody when they came to the building where the people were gathered they said these are drunk 
these are drunk because there was something to see and something to hear they say no the symptom we see here is exactly the symptom of drunkards have you see have you ever been to a drunkard's joint when you get to where people are getting drunk you will see different actions some will be on the floor some will be staggering some will be talking nonsense those are the symptoms of men that are drunk when brother paul said be not drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit what paul was saying is that when people are full of the spirit the symptoms are similar to people that are drunk with alcohol you can't be drunk and be walking normal uh -uh. no i've never seen a drunkard who is walking normal the moment you're drunk, you're walking steps. <laughs> or you see the man walking. <laughs> Nobody walks like that. Except something is doing him. Or you see him carrying his leg. Or you see him smiling anyhow. <laughs> or you see him driving. Or you see him driving flies that are not around. You wonder what is he driving? The man is not normal. Something has taken hold of him. Every child of God ought to function like that all the time. Say go bo do go boss. Don't your neighbor say be drunk with the spirit. Let me tell you the truth. Those of you that like alcohol. Those of you that like alcohol. I'm not deceived. I know there are some of you that like alcohol. I'm not deceived. <laughs> if you speak in tongues enough, you won't look for alcohol. That tipsy, that tipsy feeling that alcohol gives you, Holy Ghost own is a million times more. See, when the Holy Ghost takes hold of you, you, you become taller 10,000 10, times more suddenly every big thing becomes small in your eye when you're drunk problems lose relevance opposition suddenly is nothing all your bills you look at them financial bills you laugh because what you carry is bigger than all of them see the reason why believers get depressed is because they are not filled when you're full of the spirit you can't be depressed where is depression coming from Zebayo Talata Joko Lonto Begea Reto Barakatanaka. Everybody stand, let's blast in tongues for a few seconds. Reto Malaka Rakatasha Redo Zabara Katobe Regede Lago Zobe Reketona Kalana Mahode Lebro Jacalana Baba. They began to speak. They began to speak. They began to speak. Steer up yourself, steer up yourself, steer up yourself, steer up yourself. Rato sekelere ma shota, rendo lobo sokara na maha, agaba shokoro na sekeana, ba brada da dolo do ba ba baroko to lebere ketele de borohodia. Hey! All over this building, all over the world, on television, on social media, go ahead. Let, 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 let there be a steering. Oh, Zambro Shakayada, Reko Sobrianana, Engebo Jacaradebo Sata, Arabato Tole de Baba. Baborodobo sekele de brina hata anga ba sokoro de boshaya rakoto bo sekele de mama langro de sokele de baba boro rakoto bele de bo sataya rako sekele ma mambrando sekeya aga ba sokele de baba ba broto sekele de mosha langranda ba sokele de be aga ba ya talaba. 
In the name of Jesus. Can I hear your amen like thunder? If there's any of you that has not started speaking in tongues and you want to start right now, run out to the altar quickly. Run out all over the building. You have not started speaking. Come quickly. There's no shame about it. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You want to speak in tongues? You want to flow in the spirit? I want you to come out quickly all over the building. From the left, right, center, everybody, everywhere, everywhere. Because we're going to minister to one another now. We're going to minister to one another in the building. So if you're not flowing in the spirit, come out because you will have nothing to offer. So come out quickly, quickly, quickly. Hayabada. 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 Hela manongos, hegere debas, babra da zaga, le goro da bolsha, mambra na sokeleya, reko subra nana, le gola bo sokeyada, hey shakayada. Oh, oh, I'd like you to walk to somebody around where you are and begin to minister to one another. 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 Lego sobira na mahata. Lego rodo shekele de baraka dasaya. Lego rodo bo shekele de babara gadas kataya. Hey! Minister strength. Minister strength. Minister a steering. Minister by the gifts of the Holy Ghost. All about this building. Prophesy to one another. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Reko subara na maha. Reko subara na mane. Langro shakayala. 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 Minister to one another. Life is flowing. Minister to one another. Minister healing, minister strength, lack of super attire, minister encouragement, minister comfort, lack of sober regeneration. Hey! <laughs> hey! Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Gabriel, Pastor Kufre, Pastor Bayemi, Pastor Praise. Let's get these people filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at me, every one of you. Look at me. The Spirit of God is already inside you. The tongues are inside you. All you need to do is open your mouth and let it flow. Are you understanding? The Spirit gives you utterance. He gives you the ability. All you've got to do is just speak. And we're going to lay hands on you now and you will speak. Say with me, I will speak in tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance. Say, I receive utterance right now by the Spirit. Lift your two hands up. Jacques the boss. Say with me. Say these words with me. Say these words with me very loud. Lift your hands up. Close your eyes. Say, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am born of your spirit. I am born of your life. I am born of your spirit. I have your nature. Right now, I declare, I receive utterance. And I speak in tongues as the spirit 
gives me utterance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Go ahead and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him as fast as possible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lay hands on them and minister to them. Keep ministering to one another all over the building. Let's look for another person. Minister to the person. Look for another person. Minister to the person. All over this building. Let's minister to one another. Let go Zokoro Dobo Sakaya Namaha. Hegebo Jakaya. Hegebo Jakaya. Hegebo Jakaya. Hegebo Jakaya. Hegebo Jakaya. Hegebo Sakalataba. 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 Minister to somebody in the building. Rakoto Sokere Rebosha. Legebo Sata. Legebo Sata. Legebo Sata. Go ahead and speak out. Speak confidently. Speak with boldness. Things are shifting in the spirit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak, 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 speak. Reko shatatata. Reko shatatatata. Reko shatatatata. Go ahead and speak. O Jacora, 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 Hey! Go ahead! Go ahead. Speak, 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 speak. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. That's right, that's right. Go ahead and speak. Go ahead and speak. Confidently speak. Zakorodobo Saka. Zakorodobo Saka. Zakorodobo Saka. Zakorodobo Saka. Zakorodobo Saka. Moshakea, Moshakea, Moshakea. Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Speak, 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 speak. Speak. Hey! Hey! Speak, speak, speak. 
speak, speak. Speak, speak, speak. Oh, Jacola the bass. Oh, Jacola bahas. Oh, Jacola bahas. Oh, Jacola bahas. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Something to see and something to hear. Zekoroto Sakaya. Zekoroto Sakaya. You can go to your seats now speaking. Continue speaking as you go to your seat. Continue speaking. Continue speaking. Continue speaking. Zekoroto Sakaya. Zekoroto Sakaya. Continue speaking. Oh, Shakaya. Oh, Continue speaking. Continue speaking. Allah Bohodia. Allah the Bohodia. You rise up like an edifice. Higher and higher. You rise tall in the spirit. And every natural thing becomes small. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. <laughs> Says the Spirit of God, man full of the Spirit will shake this world like never before. Spirit-filled man Walking on the face of the earth. Spirit filled man. Walking in the miraculous like never before. Spirit filled man. Speaking things that can only come from the Holy Ghost. Things that will cause men to marvel. Things that will cause men to shudder. Things that will cause men to shake. Man full of the spirit. Taking over. Taking over institutions taking over space taking over parastatals everywhere you turn men full of the spirit walking the face of the earth like god on the earth these are the days saith god the world is about to see men like they've never seen before and your real status your real identity saith god and your real status new kind of humanity that the world never saw before a new race a new breed of people manifesting glory upon the face of the earth that will cause sinners to come under conviction that will cause the sick to be healed and to experience the goodness of our god this is that day this is that day some of you have stepped in once in a while and stepped out once in a while you have had glimpses glimpses a little here and a little there a little here once in a while and some of you have had encounters and encounters of my glory and of my power but yes saith god it shall not be a little here and a little there. You're going to jump in the flow of the river of my spirit and manifest my glory like the world has never seen before, saith God. And yea, yea, there will be so much sound and there will be so many signs that will cause the world to know that truly the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. So yield, yield, yield to my spirit. There are ways of the supernatural and there are parts in the supernatural that are guaranteed to deliver you victory all the time. But you will have to let my spirit take you through. You will have to let my spirit walk you through those ways and those parts. I have said in my word, you walk in the spirit. 
And you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. There are pathways and there are realms of my spirit that you plunge into where the natural suddenly is nothing before your eyes. You come up. You come up. You come up he that saith God. You come up by yielding yourself to my spirit. And my spirit will navigate with you through those parts. And you will see victory like you've never seen before. And you will see the true meaning of what it means to overcome all the time, saith God. You just yield and let my spirit do the rest. You just yield and let my spirit carry you through. You just yield and let my spirit navigate you through. You just yield and let my spirit show you things great and mighty. Great and mighty things which you never knew before. Say of God, these are the days. So you get ready, get excited, yield, and let the flow begin. Says the spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Just wave your hands and give him praise and give him honor and give him worship and give him thanks and magnify the Lord. Rako sokele de bahata. Membronda zokolo de brinahata. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless this morning. This is the refreshing. Which God will use to cause the weary to rest. When you begin to flow in the spirit, you enter into rest. Or you experience the rest. That is already yours. When you begin to pray in the spirit. Worries disappear. Pressures disappear. Tensions disappear. Things that threaten you suddenly are nothing. Because in the spirit you rise. And the whole world shrinks before your face. Yeah. Yeah. Diseases flee your body. They flee. I just read a report from a medical research in America. Some physicians came together and made a research and discovered that when people speak in tongues, it brings down high blood pressure. Instantly. Instantly. A brother, a brother had a stroke and was in the hospital and his blood pressure was 200 and something. You know the story. I flew from Abuja and went to the hospital. The nurses said, we don't know what to do. The pressure has refused to come down. We've applied all medications. I took a few of my sons. We stood around the bed. We just went. After a while, he started speaking. He has not been talking or moving. He himself, the thing entered and sparked his spirit. So from inside, he too started joining. After some 30 to 40 minutes of tonguing, I told them, check the pressure. It came down to 145. God is not stupid to give you tongues. You are not wiser than God. Why are you mising it? Are you paying tax? Brother Paul said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all. Do you know what Paul was talking? That is the whole church, when you gather all their tongues, is not up to Paul's tongue. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. No wonder he wrote more books than all of them put together. When you start tonguing, you are navigating ways of the spirit. And you are bringing out treasures. You are pulling treasures out of the spirit. You are pulling solutions, answers. You are pulling direction. You are pulling all kinds of things out of the spirit. He said he speaketh mysteries. He speaketh mysteries. How be it in the spirit? He speaketh mysteries. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning? Oh, hallelujah. You go ahead speaking tongues. When you get home, blow in tongues for as many hours as possible. You wake up in the morning, blow in tongues. You get to your office, you have a little break, enter the toilet, blow in tongues. In the car, blow in tongues. Make it a lifestyle. That's why it was given. Praise God. Excited? Let's celebrate with joy this morning. Hallelujah. Glory! Amen.